Hi guys, Tom here, and welcome to my Raw review from last night. So it's the 18th of February, 2013 episode of Monday Night Raw. I did watch it live because it is the holidays, I've got a week holiday. So I, I really, really enjoyed this Raw episode. I thought it was pretty awesome, it was one of the best Raw episodes I've watched in quite a long time. And I'm basically going to give you my whole rundown of what happened, my personal opinion on what happened, and just my overall feel of what's to come in the next few weeks leading up to WrestleMania. So, the first thing that happened, which I predicted on my preview show, was we started off with John Cena. Now, if you're wondering why I did that preview show, is I'm going to start doing preview shows every single week from now on. So, basically, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on what I think could possibly happen on that night's Monday Night Raw. But I did predict John Cena would start off in the ring explaining about WrestleMania 29. Now, Cena started giving his kind of third-person opinion on the matches at WrestleMania. Basically, he was saying about Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger, and then CM Punk came out, and John Cena said to CM Punk, if you want to prove that you're better than me, because John Cena and CM Punk have been at each they've had a match between each other nine times, and CM Punk has won every time, CM Punk was basically trying to make a point that he feels that John Cena is not very deserved of that main event spot at WrestleMania 29 against The Rock, and John Cena is decided to put his main event spot at WrestleMania 29 on the line this week on that episode. But then CM Punk decides that he wants that match next week. And to be honest, I think most of the Raw, the stuff that happened on this week's Raw, is for some feuds between the next weeks leading up to WrestleMania 29. Because we got this match, we also got another match later on tonight, which we'll be getting next week on Raw. But basically, I think, I've, I really like this segment. I thought it really, really set it up because... Whether they're just doing this to spice it up and Cena's going to come out the winner, or we could get a triple threat match. Possibly The Rock comes out. I'm not particularly sure. Something like that, which could mean that we get a triple threat. But to be honest, most triple threats main events on pay-per-views suck. So I'm not particularly sure if WWE know that, or I don't know. But I wouldn't. to be honest, if I was going to choose it, I'd rather see CM Punk versus The Rock again. I wouldn't want to see John Cena versus The Rock. I don't think they put on a very good match at WrestleMania 29. The Royal Rumble match between uh, The Rock and CM Punk was awesome. So was the one at Elimination Chamber. Not as much, but it was. I thought it was pretty awesome. So I'd rather see that rematch the third time instead of John Cena versus The Rock. But it, I'm not sure if they're doing this to spice it up and John Cena's just going to win. Or we could possibly get a triple threat match. But I think... I think I could be excited about a triple threat match, but they usually do suck. So, the first match was Sin Cara versus Mark Henry. And this match was uh, boring because Mark Henry won. We, it was pretty obvious that Mark Henry was going to win. I say it was boring. It was actually pretty good, but it was so short and it was pretty vintage Mark Henry. He just came in there, got the job done and came out the winner. And... I've really, really liked Mark Henry's matches since he come back. he's come back. I think he's been really, really good. I've always really liked his matches. I'm not sure why. From an outside point of view, he kind of walks around the ring. He's not he's not fast-paced at all. You can say that. And some people think he's a bit of a slobber and he can't put an entertaining matches. But I definitely think Sin Cara and Mark Henry in a match was really... It really worked really well together. Sin Cara couldn't get out the blocks. He couldn't do anything. Mark Henry was dominant the whole way through. And then after the match, the great Carly comes out. And um, Mark Henry jumps out the ring. Obviously scared of Mark Hen um, Carly. I'm not particularly sure why because he's just dancing. And then Mark Henry mocks him by dancing outside the ring. Which I thought was pretty funny. But it kind of looks like... Like I said, they're building feuds... Could possibly get a Mark Henry and Great Carly feud at WrestleMania 29. But to be honest, they've got to make Carly a heel for them to have that. Because I just don't think the Great Carly is a big threat being a face. And for great, for the Great Carly to be at WrestleMania 29, I think he needs to be a heel. And make a kind of dominant, like, a kind of beast versus beast match. You can't do that with a face versus a heel. A, fa a face that especially dances around and looks like a bit of a pansy. But the next match we had was The Miz versus Antonio Cesaro. I didn't like how they booked this match. It was over Twitter. And they said that The Miz and the gets his last chance against Antonio Cesaro. And I personally thought that this was a US Championship match. So when The Miz came out of the winner, I was expecting The Miz to win the United States Championship match. But he didn't. Because... 
Jerry, it must have been Jerry Lawler that got it wrong. He said it was a rematch from last night. But well, the Miz won with the figure four. Cesaro tapped out, which I was pretty surprised about. I thought Cesaro would get the win over this one. But it does look like they're going to go for a WrestleMania 29 last match between these guys for the United States Championship. The Miz versus Antonio Cesaro at WrestleMania 29. The match itself was pretty awesome. One of the best matches I've, I saw on Raw last night. I was being pretty disappointed between their Royal Rumble and Elimination Chamber 2013 matches. But I thought this match was really, really good. It was pretty fast-paced as well. I really, really liked it. I'm not particularly sure why they're still going with that bandage because it wasn't that bad and most wrestlers go through that amount of pain every single match. The next match was Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio. Finally, Dolph Ziggler gets a match on Raw. I can't remember the last time he had a match on Raw. It must have been about two weeks ago or something like that. But Del Rio countered Ziggler's move and finished it off with a cross arm breaker. This match itself was really, really good as well. It was very, very fast-paced, very technical, and I've always really, really liked Alberto Del Rio since he started his new gimmick of the Lucha Libre style. Dolph Ziggler, of course, was awesome as well. He did some very good uh, drop kicks, but the match ended when AJ basically distracted, I think it was um, Alberto Del Rio, of course, and then Alberto Del Rio turned around and you thought it was going to be one of those traditional things where Zig Ziggler hits in a zigzag and it's just a basic distraction. But Ziggler kind of got distracted by what AJ was doing and Alberto Del Rio managed to set up Dolph Ziggler in the cross arm break. And then guess what happens next? Big E Langston comes in, drops Alberto Del Rio. Dolph Ziggler looks at his money in the bank briefcase, just about to cash in his money in the bank. And guess what? Ricardo Rodriguez, out of the, he just jumps in on the camera angle. I completely forgot about him. And ran up the ramp with the money in the bank briefcase. He drops it halfway up the ramp as Big E Langston was chasing after him. He was actually pretty basey. He ran up the arena, out, out, of, out of the arena. And the briefcase was dropped in the middle of the ramp. As soon as AJ collected the briefcase on the ramp, Dolph Ziggler was just about to cash in and then guess what, Alberto Del Rio hits him with an Instagram, the move that he botched last night on, sorry, on Elimination Chamber 2013, so two days ago now, and basically Dolph Ziggler couldn't cash in, so it kind of looks like he's going to cash in at WrestleMania 29 now. I would have been kind of disappointed if he cashed in on a standard WWE Raw episode. So, the next match we're rolling on is Naomi Tensai and Brodus Clay versus Rosa Mendez, Primo and Epico. Brodus and Tensai and Naomi obviously won this one. It was obviously a standard tag match. Nothing very interesting except Rosa Mendez looking hot. But apart from that... Brodus Clay, Tensai and Naomi won. C nothing really memorable except for that splash that they do at the end where Tensai jumps on him and um, Brodus Clay basically heads butts him. They won. It was a squash match. Nothing uh, nothing really to say about that. It was okay. There was a few good moves by Naomi through the legs and she did a really nice twist move. But apart from that, just a basic squash match. Then we got an announcement from Mr. McMahon that he would face... Paul Heyman next week on Monday Night Raw. So we've got two matches. We've got this one and we've also got the one between CM Punk and John Cena for John Cena's main event spot at WrestleMania. So they're basically leading up loads of storylines towards next week and the weeks heading into WrestleMania 29. <gasps> Brad Maddox was also promoted to the assistant manager of Vicky Guerrero. So it'll be interesting to see what they're actually going on with there. But the match between Vince McMahon, Vince <laughs> Gennady McMahon and Paul Heyman is will Brock Lesnar get involved? To be honest, I think he will. Not sure what will happen there, but it'll be interesting to see next week on Monday Night Raw. The next match was Daniel Bryan versus Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger made a really, really good promo cut with Zeb Coulter before this match about their racist America. It looks like they're going for the racist America versus Alberto Del Rio, who is obviously from Mexico, so he's living in America. They're going to build that feud going into WrestleMania 29. It could make one of the most outstanding matches this year at WrestleMania, one of the most surprising matches at WrestleMania 29, but Swagger applies the Patriot Lock and Brian taps out. Nothing surprising there. I thought it was a really, really good match. Like most of the matches tonight, except the last match I just talked about, I've really, really liked Jack Swagger recently. Daniel Bryan was okay. Jack Swagger was awesome. Ever since he's come back, he's been dominant. I think he could be a really, really good hit at WrestleMania 29. The best match of the night was the Shield versus Chris Jericho, Ryback, and Sheamus. Last last time at my Elimination Chamber 2013 matches, I couldn't, I just couldn't get out the people that were in the match. It was, it was John Cena, Sheamus, and Randy Orton. And um, no, it wasn't. It was Sheamus, Ryback, and John Cena versus the Shield. But this time on Monday Night Raw it was the first match where we saw the Shield 
go up against an opponent on a standard Monday Night Raw. We've seen them at TLC 2012 and we saw them at the Elimination Chamber 2013 pay-per-view. Apart from that, we haven't seen them on a WWE Raw main episode. So we got them going up against Chris Jericho, Ryback and Sheamus. Ryback was walking around the backstage at the start of the Raw episode and Sheamus was having a go at him saying that he wasn't the only loser. I personally thought that pinning Ryback made Ryback look very, very weak and I disagreed with how WWE chose that Ryback should be pinned. I thought it possibly should have been possibly Sheamus or John Cena. So Chris Jericho basically went to Vicky Guerrero and got this match on. So it's The Shield versus Chris Jericho, Ryback and Sheamus. The match was absolutely awesome. We got another spear by Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins did his finisher off the top rope. I'm not sure if you watch NXT, but his, basically his finisher is where he hits somebody with a sweet chin music with the side of his leg, I think it is. It's kind of like a punt, like Randy Orton, but he did it off the top of the ropes on the top of the turnbuckle onto Jericho whilst he was doing the Wars of Jericho and Ambrose covered Jericho because obviously Seth Rollins wasn't the active man. So the Shield won. I was expecting the Shield to win. Looks like they're going for them. For basically their foreseeable future so I hope the Shields stay together for a very long time I really really like them as a tag team and I just think that it was a very awesome match and really really like this match the next match was Kurt for Kingston versus Damian Sandow the match never got started Damian Sandow basically was talking to the American Universe, the WWE Universe, about his perfect America, I think it was. I wasn't really watching it this time. I was slightly distracted because it wasn't very interesting. So, our truth uh, Damien Sandow started beating up Kofi Kingston. The match never got started, so we didn't actually get this match. Our truth comes out, beats up Damien Sandow. Our truth hasn't been seen for months because he got a leg injury. So, it looks like they could possibly be going for the Kofi Kingston and our truth tag team yet again. They're an awesome tag team, and I'm really, really excited about this. They're a very good tag team, especially at WrestleMania time when they had the World Tag Team Championships, which Kane and Daniel Bryan now own. So it kind of looks like R-Truth's back and could tag team with R-Truth, which I'm excited about because Kofi Kingston really hasn't hit off since he lost it into Continental Championship in singles competition. The next and final match was Randy Orton versus Kane. Kane went for the choke slam, but it's distracted by, yes, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan walks out down the ramp and then guess what? Orton hits an RKO. I wish he'd make Randy Orton's matches less predictable, but there we go. He hits the RKO, and of course, Randy Orton's going to win, win with the RKO. The last and final segment of WWE Raw, Monday Night Raw, on the 18th of February 2013, was The Rock celebrating his WWE title win, or should I say retained his WWE title. They were kind of acting like he'd won it off CM Punk, but of course he hadn't because he already had the WWE Championship going into Elimination Chamber, even though CM Punk had the championship. But they, they had a celebration and The Rock announces or shows us the new WWE Championship title belt. And there is a picture, an awesome picture on WWE.com and I'm going to pop it up now and it looks absolutely awesome. It looks very vintage. It doesn't have a spinny belt. I, I kind of think the WWE's kind of slightly big but I really like the gold and the black and it, it does look quite cool if you look on the sides there is a Brahma Bull logo and apparently that's not going to be there if somebody like Sit and Punk fingers crossed becomes the WWE Champion and they would just replace that with a standard W sign for WWE logo apart from that John Cena came out when The Rock was like there's one opponent that I'd like to win at this match next week on Raw between John Cena and The Rock and Cena comes out and then Sion Punk comes out as well with his WWE Championship and hits John Cena around the head and that's basically how Raw ended. Sion Punk walked off when The Rock wanted him to come in the ring and that's basically how Raw ended. So I'm going to give my overall rating of all the matches. Sin Cara vs Mark Henry a 7 out of 10. The no disqualification match between The Miz and Antonio Cesaro where they did use weapons but it wasn't very influential on the match. I'd probably give that match a 8.5 out of 10. Ziggler vs Del Rio 9 out of 10. Naomi 10 saying Brodus Clay versus Rosa Mendes, Primo and Epico, I give that a 4 out of 10. Daniel Bryan versus Jack Swagger, I've give that a 7 out of 10. The Shield versus Chris Jericho, Ryback and Sheamus, 9 out of 10. Kofi Kingston versus Damon Sandow, 0 out of 10. It never happens. Randy Orton versus Kane, 8 out of 10. The Rock's new WWE Championship, 10 out of 10. Get us the thumbs up from me, guys. What do you think? Thanks for watching this video. My overall view of Raw was a 9 out of 10, so pretty good. So, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.